Hey, everybody. Uh, before we get into the show, I'm going to make a little announcement that you're going to see for the next couple of weeks. So I'm sorry if this video gets annoying and, and boring and you're like, God, oh, it's the same thing. Bleep that. It's going to be the same thing every time, blah, blah, blah. But it's fine. Everything's fine. I have cancer. No. Um, Thin Lips, my comedy special, my first comedy special um, that I claim is... Uh, is out right now. So uh, if you're watching this and you're about and you're like, I love Sagalo, I want to watch the show. Go after this, watch the special if you if you you can stand any more of me, because um, I'm a little humble. I'm so humble. <laughs> Listen to me. Uh, so watch it now. Leave a comment. Um, shout out Nicole who directed and edited it and made it the what you see and colored it oh my god all this stuff she put so much more work into it than i did as you can tell by the i shouldn't say that it's good i do a good job uh, so without further ado go watch the show go watch the special go leave a comment saying that you you listen to the podcast um uh, fork spoon played it and uh uh share with your friends go watch it thin lips on youtube right now Jack Black and Sag Daddy, I'm back at it with a fantastic podcast for your asses. Yapping in a trap like a rescue cat, and the rescued up like they're waiting on the Batman. You tuned into the dude who threw booze back, blacked out, woke up drunk, covered in bruises. It's Sag Daddy the Pod, an odd fellow, the great white chubby, I'm becoming a marshmallow. It's Sag Daddy the Pod, so sit back and relax, cause like a broken arm, I got a cast now. It's Sag Daddy the Pod, you made a good choice, so enjoy, don't be annoyed, now here's my dumb voice. What's up everybody, welcome to another episode episode of sag daddy da pod thanks for all the positive feedback we got a great episode today uh, maybe <laughs> we haven't uh we're doing it we're recording the monologue thing before the guest so this could be a stinkeroo this could be a pass i mean you know it could be fine i think it's going to be good though um just out of instinct and feeling i think it's going to be good aaron mccain is here Irish fella. Um, maybe I can just predict things that might happen. He sucks my... Oh, I'm, not... I'm trying not to curse too, too quickly in the beginning because I hate seeing... We finally got this channel to be monetized and I hate seeing that little yellow dollar sign because the green dollar sign means you're, ma you're making money. And the, what is the yellow one? The yellow is limited, so it only plays ads for certain people, but I just don't think there's any at all. Like, it's de it deems it as unsafe for certain advertisers. And sometimes we just don't know why. What's wrong with the world? You know what I mean? Like, why is the internet so... Why, why do we have to make the whole fucking world so safe for children? Like, everything is so safe for kids. Every, the whole world... You know, some of us don't have families, okay? Okay. I don't, I don't get it. The whole, this whole, like everybody <laughs> just having a fucking stroke, but I really do hate it. Everything's censored. <laughs> Austin comedy scene. Here I come. No, everything's censored. Everybody, you're not allowed to say anything anymore. No, but you know what I'm talking about? Like, it's not like that. I'm not trying to be like that kind of guy, but why is everything so safe for kids the internet's got to be safe for kids tv's got to be safe for kids and we, we 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 make this whole fucking world safe for children and and you know maybe just talk to your kids you know what i mean why do i have to not say something crazy in the beginning why can't i be a little crazy and then i lose money because i uh, because why because i can't get a fucking job so i decided to do this but I can't be clean because I don't know how to be funny that way. And then, you know, and then I'm just going to be fucking homeless. Oh, shit. <laughs> Cursed. Well, whatever. So we got a great episode. Sorry to do that to all you guys. Put you in a really bad mood on this delicious Wednesday. Um, and thanks for all the positive feedback. I mean, for the most part, it's pretty awesome. Everybody's I, I couldn't have asked for more. I mean, I could, but, I, you know. We're still a small little show, but the numbers, I, I thought 12 people were going to listen to every episode. So the fact that, that we have like good numbers and people are commenting and um, sharing and all that stuff, it really means the world to us. 
So, <laughs> so keep doing that stuff. Keep telling your friends. And if somebody's a freaking silly goose <laughs> in the comments, which I don't care. <laughs> Still that guy. <laughs> Tell them to go F themselves. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, and send us stuff. Like, we're trying to fill this whole back wall with... We're trying to make this place look good. The couch is going to go, okay? We're in the middle of the couch going. I actually called because this is my ex-girlfriend's couch. You, you want to get really into the nitty and gritty? This is my ex-girlfriend's couch. She is not living in a place where she can have a couch, so I'm storing it, but it's getting a little too long of storage. So I hit her up, and I went, you got to come get your couch. I can't, I can't have your stuff here anymore. It's killing me. And she was like, okay, I get that, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, you know what? She's like, you could just get rid of the couch. So I'm like, well, now it's my couch. Once you go, you can just get rid of the couch. I go, well, now it's my couch. Like, I don't feel that, like, I'm, I'm holding her stuff anymore. You know what I mean? So it's still a shitty couch, but I think we could clean it up a little bit now. Now I feel like we can, we'll, now it's my couch. We can get a couch cover. We can make it look good. Or two lazy boys. We're trying to get enough money to get two lazy boys. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, I'm just, I, I'm, you just threw me for a loop because I thought you were going to say like, it's a relief. You can get rid of this and get a new couch. But now that it's quote unquote, your couch, you want to keep it? And just soup it up? I don't know, but we definitely need to get... I if mean, you, I definitely want to get rid of this at some point, but I cannot afford... A let's new, start a GoFundMe for a couch. Let's start a GoFundMe for a couch. Guys. <laughs> it's an go emergency. Go fund my couch. This is an emergency. <laughs> go fund my couch. This is an emergency. <laughs> no, the best that you guys can do to support is just keep listening to the show and like... What? <laughs> Give us money, please. Give us money, yeah. But you, if you click the badge button, I can get badges now and stuff. You can donate money in the chat. Yeah, you, know. you can tip. Sorry. Sorry that I... Sorry. Oh, oh, a little... Where's, do I have an empty can? Oh, no. Please. <laughs> please. I need to pay rent. No, all money that we'll get, we'll put into the show anyway. So we, we want a new couch, but at least a new couch cover. And I know what you're thinking. Sagalo, you can't even afford a new couch cover. <laughs> No, I can't afford a new couch cover. I got one with the, the last money I have. <laughs> and guess what? Doesn't fit the couch. So eventually, we're going to clean this place up. It's going to look good. But we need, we need you guys. This is like a campaign. I'm like, a, it's like a presidential campaign. I'm like, please give me money. Um, but also comment who you want to see on the pod. Comment who you want to see on the podcast. If you're having fun, let us know. If you like the show, let us know. If it's too short, too long, I'm too, I'm too fat. Oh, our guest is here. Aaron, you could just walk right in. All right. So we'll see you on the show. Bye-bye. Let me tell you something that I've noticed about Irish people. What have you noticed? Fucking assholes. You love talking about what your culture has done to you. Every Irish person I've ever talked to is like, it's because I'm Irish that I, <laughs> oh, yes, I, I love McDonald's because I'm Irish. No, that's you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. You know, oh, I love beating my wife and uh, drinking. We love drinking. Beating the wife's very Irish, yeah. <laughs> we love beating the wife. We love drinking because we're Irish. You know, it's all... You talk to Katie Boyle, you know, and she's she's always like, oh, it's because I'm Irish. That's, but like, know, as an like, excuse for what? For how you are, you know. You can't just... I'm being so aggressive now. You can't just... Let me calm down. This is a crazy start. <laughs> crazy start. <laughs> You're like, let me tell you about Irish people. Me sitting right here. And I'm like, I'll let I'm you just cook because I'm in your house. Please let me cook. Um, it's the only time I've ever cooked in this house, to be honest. <laughs> it's, this, is a, this is a delivery fucking, I only get delivery. Speaking of having I'm right no there money. With you. How dare I in the monologue talk about how I have no money and then be like, yeah, I, always, I never cook, so whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I just noticed that about Irish people. And I got to tell you, you got to let go of it. Be the first one 
be the first Irish person to not have the excuse is that I'm Irish. Oh. But then what could I blame things on? Just me? Yeah. That's not exciting. <laughs> I just hate, and this is probably a bad business to be in for this, but I hate like generalizations. I hate making excuses because, and where people are like, uh, because I'm a man. Well, all men do this. All women do this. Because I'm an American, I do this. Because I'm Irish. Just, hey, just, d- there's nothing, if anything, <laughs> just, your, it's your parents. I also don't <laughs> like generalizations, yeah. you know, like uh, of any sort. Like it's lazy. I, yeah, I remember getting into a disagreement with a lady friend because she pulled the kind of all men are trash thing. And I was like, well, your brother's great. You know, you haven't You're, called me a cunt ever. Yeah. So. I've had that exact conversation with a girlfriend before where, she, where like, she'll be like, men do this. And I'm like, I don't do that. Yeah. I let them know right away. That generalization shit is not going to work because, and I, I can like... I can like feel it when I say it on stage that people are like, I know a ton of people that don't do that. Yeah. You know, but I think people, people need the generalization as a sort of like, well, it's me versus them type thing. As far as the art goes. Yeah. It's good for the art. You yeah. Know, Cause you oh, know, all women do this. And- I love a generalization. It's cause I'm Irish. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> yeah. We get it. Do you have green eyes? No, I have blue. Blue. So much so that I have got, because let me tell you something. Uh, American people, you get a bad rap. Now I'm going to tell you about Americans, right? Okay. You get a bad rap for being stupid, and I don't agree with that. I want to say, I put my hands up. Some of the most introspective people I know, some of the most interesting conversations I've ever had, have been with American people. It's just that you're returning people. We're all stupid. No, I name disagree. a country of not stupid people. Go, go um, ahead, go ahead, go. Also, doesn't this look like uh, when the Spider Mans met each other? You and me. <laughs> uh, go ahead, go ahead. I'll wait. Look, Japan, Japan. Yeah, not, it's not filled with any stupid people. No, name me one dumb Japanese person right now. I give you time. Lucy Liu. <laughs> no, she's Chinese, isn't she? <laughs> She's Chinese. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. I, I just, I, 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 get, I get a little too angry over stuff. You know, I, got, I feel myself going, how did I get there? You know what I mean? I used to not be that angry of a person. It's because you're American, bro. <laughs> See, doesn't it feel I good to it does blame your problems? Good. I don't know, I guess, I guess. No, I like to blame my, my problems on mostly me and, then, and a little bit of my, mostly my parents. Okay. And then as I get older, it has to be more me. Because you can't be... Blaming your parents till uh, when you're like sixty, but I guess you could, because we're all products of our environment. I want to be a product of my environment. This is uh, I don't know if it's like what movie I'm is that from dumb or I don't know. I don't want to be a product of my environment. Pretty well. I, I want my environment to be a product of me. Well, that sounds sick and twisted. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it? Sounds sick and twisted. <laughs> <laughs> That was English, you piece of shit. That was your best Oliver Twist. And then if I told you to do Oliver Twist, you'd fuck it up. No, it's from The Departed, which you should know because you're Irish. Well, yeah, I just don't know it line by line, you know? I like to watch things and then move on. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) There's got to be a movie you know line by line. Weirdly, Green Street. Green Street Hooligans? Yeah. Really? Yeah, for some reason, like whenever I was in my teens, we watched that. Like on a bi-weekly basis. A hundred percent. That was it's like your so Bible. hundred percent. I had a I had a movie like that too called SLC Punk. You ever see that? No. With Matthew Lillard. He plays like a punk rocker anarchist guy in Salt Lake City. And that was like my Bible for a long time. Completely also missing the point of the movie, which is that anarchy cannot exist. And, you know, that uh, that lifestyle is impermanent and blah, blah, blah. Like that, that's the whole point of the movie. And it's like it's almost like watching uh, like a like Scarface or Blow and turning it off before it gets bad and being like, yep, this is like that's how we lived. We were like, yeah, we're going to we're going to live. No rules. Anarchy. My, my buddy got the because in a scene they have uh, 666 tattooed on their ass. He got it tattooed on his ass. What age? Like 22. That's acceptable. Dumb tattoos are fine up until about 25. Do you have any tattoos? I have I have various tattoos. I have a couple of dumb ones. Mm-hmm. I got them post 25. I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> uh, you, you do look like a guy that if you took your shirt off, you'd have like like 
a fucking a fucking piece right no, here. Nothing on the torso, nothing on the arms, but the legs are getting covered. My one of really? my best friends back home is a tattoo artist, and like just after the pandemic, I started working in his studio as like a receptionist. Complete spoofer job. Receptionist. Yeah. I was a tattoo receptionist, so I'd be like, hey, what are you in for or whatever? And then I'd like do his books and all all that shit. And then I would just talk to the people as they were getting tattooed. And because he was doing like portraits, it would be like an all day thing. And the openness of people after about one or two hours in the chair is unbelievable. I find out about the this Every day tea was getting spilled in that Really? Place. Oh, yeah. If I'm getting time. a tattoo, I'm not, I don't want to talk to you. If I had some fucking guy being like, so, you know, like, <laughs> what, what, it's having any meaning. Like, no, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, you just like it. Yes, I just like it. Yeah. Let's what? talk. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you, are you saying? Getting on? Is that your first tattoo? What's the crack? Uh, no, it's not my first tattoo. Oh, sorry. sorry. In the hypothetical, you were wearing a long sleeve. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't don't add anything. <laughs> don't add. You don't add the anything. Yes, you are. Okay. You, I mean, I guess you could. It's it's uh, it's unfair of me as your improv partner to tell you not to add anything. We're at my friend's tattoo studio. Yeah, we're okay. At, we're at uh, Lucky Tattoos or whatever it, you fucking Molly's Irish chamber. people call. Which is not Ireland, too far off. <laughs> everything in Ireland is like Lucky Bar. You know, it's like, not though, and that's what you guys do over here because. I can I can tell, right? <laughs> yeah. I have a sixth sense where if I look at an Irish bar in America, I can tell just from looking at it if there's actually any Irish people right, in there. Right, right, right. Because you just have the most fucking chat GBT Irish names of all time. You're like, <laughs> I guarantee you nobody in Fiddly McGee's is actually Irish. <laughs> you know I, mean? I know. And then you walk in and it like, it doesn't have that vibe. Like there is a bar right there run by Irish people called McGuinness's. I saw that in the way in, yeah. And that's that's Irish. Yeah. But you can tell. You walk in and you're like, this is a place to relapse, which I did. <laughs> did but you actually? Yeah, in, yeah. in that exact bar? Yeah, in that exact bar. What a place to do it. Oh, and buddy, I could feel it creeping up again. You think, you, you think after shitting my pants, r relapsing and then shitting my pants, I'd be like, I'm done. But the other day, I was, we were talking about wine and I was like... <laughs> So, okay, we're in the tattoo parlor. Mm. Oh, uh, and you could see I'm wearing what I'm wearing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't okay. have to be like, I love your Christmas Santa hat <laughs> that you have on. You don't have to add anything. This is, you know. Okay. 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 So you're the receptionist. You don't even get to, do you know how to tattoo? No, I do not. So why, how'd you get this job? My friend, now I'm talking to you. My mm. friend just had too much money. I'd be like, who is this guy? Okay. So now I'm getting a tattoo of a. Uh, Let's say it's of a uh, Christmas tree. Christmas tree? A burning Christmas tree. It symbolizes. Burning Christmas tree? Yeah, it's on fire, but it's a Christmas tree. Okay. Not a bad idea for a tattoo, um, by the way. Wow, Christmas tree in July? Yeah, but I love Christmas. Is that why it's burning? Do you have somewhere to be? <laughs> like, I got, well, I work I'm going to look at the tattoo are guy. You, oh, American, oh, you work here. Are you visiting? Yes. What about you, Doma? Oh, my God. <laughs> I hate this. I hate this. This is like when your Uber driver talks to you. <laughs> I talk. Listen. Yeah, I I'm going to cause a lot of hate here. I talk to every single Uber driver. Why? Because they're a fucking human being. They're not like a fucking. People look at it like, oh, I get to go from A to B. Do you talk to your haircut? Your barber person too? Do I talk to my haircut? Do you, do you talk to your. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> You know what I meant. So you left the door you know open and I, I mean. walked through. <laughs> uh, I would no. Well, out here, I the barber back home. I have I've had him my whole life, so he knows me inside out. I did get one haircut he knows your here. Inside? Sorry, <laughs> gay. <laughs> he knows your inside. No, every barber in Ireland's homophobic. Oh, of course they are. So okay, sorry, that was stupid. Um, and I've lost my train of thought. Oh, no, sorry. Moron. I had a haircut out here in Queens. Okay. And the guy originally kind of had the vibe that he didn't want to be spoke to. So I didn't. And then he opened the floor and then that set me off. And then I could tell he regretted it. Yeah. So you, when you get a haircut, you don't talk to the person. It, depending on their demeanor. Same goes for Uber drivers. If I get into an Uber and I can tell immediately he doesn't want to be spoken to, I won't do it. However... At various times, I've spoke to the Uber driver, and they go, you're the first person to speak to me all day. And I go, you know what, mate? That's fucked up. 
Why? Because I have a buddy that's just like you, dude. He he's always like, they're people. It's like whatever. Like, but it's not on some like kind of like you know. Some people don't like talking. Oh, I'm morally superior because I talk to my Uber driver. It's more of a thing of like I I like talking to people. Ugh, I hate it. You've been here for too long. That's why. Everywhere I go, no, because in New York they really don't talk to you that much. But if you have an accent, they do. <laughs> they're like, oh, where are you from? Yeah. Um, if I'm in like. Portland or something. They're like, they're like, what brings you here? You're like, oh my god. What's what's Portland like? Because it's a lot of a lot of homeless people and stuff. But it's really cool. It's not. It's like it's really cool. The uh, it's really like artistic and stuff. And they have like their you know they it it is really cool. But um, a lot of drug addicts and stuff. Because the only knowledge I have of America in general is comedy podcasts from here and then professional wrestling. And that's it. <laughs> Uh, me and Soder were, uh, speaking of drivers that I never want to talk to, me mm -hmm. and Soder, when I was opening for him on the road, uh, we had a driver that just was so fucking annoying. It was like 5.30 in the morning and she's like talking to us and, and all that stuff. And at one point she goes, uh, we were, we, we were like amazed by this. She goes, uh, she goes, you know, you got to turn that frown, um, upside down, make a smile. She goes. I just thought of that. <laughs> she goes, wow, I've never even thought about that, how a, a frown is an upside down smile. Wow, look at that. And me and Soda are just in the back going like, what? Yeah. She's never heard of that before? Yeah. She, <laughs> yeah. she was like, you guys ever hear about that? Whoa, <laughs> it is kind of an upside down smile, don't you think? And we're like, well, that's an insane person. Buddy, they're all insane. No, not yes. at all. The guy who left me here today, lovely fella. From the Dominican you took an Republic. Uber today? Yeah, I took an Uber today. Damn. Be because now here's here's a here's a bad trait I have is I know I shouldn't get Ubers. I know I'm not financially secure enough to be getting Ubers, but the transactions I make on whether it's worth it or not are ridiculous. So today I was like, I want to lie in bed for another seven minutes. Gotcha. And then I I want to get a uh, a croissant from I get the shop. That. I get that. I, I get addicted to Ubers where I'm like, I'm like, if I take one, I'm taking them for the rest of the week and then I'm fucked. Yeah. And I, I, I put everything on a credit card and boy, is that not working out for me? I'm like, I'm like, I can live like this. And, and then I look at my statement and I go, that's not good. See, and, isn't that quite common where people like take out your credit cards and like max them out? Uh, yeah. That's mad. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? It's. Yeah, it is kind of mad, I guess. It is kind of mad. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at me. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> well, I guess it is kind of mental. What's your favorite uh, Irish lingo? Because I know you and Katie are I very love close. crack. Crack? I love, I love when someone's like, he's got good crack. Is there any I, you don't I like? I literally... The rest. Don't lie to me. <laughs> uh, uh, is there any... No, no. I, Katie says stuff all the time that I'm... I think you guys got really good slang. I like crack. She said something on her on her episode where she goes, "I got the ride." Yeah, and I was yeah, like, the ride. Oh, that's yeah. fucking cool. That's great. Yeah. What Is do you guys say? Everything we say, we've made everything up. Everything. You know what's dude? So, you know what's really gay? Is that you guys say we made out? I hate that so made, much. Made made out. Made out. Is so like made out, like kissing. Yeah, I don't like that. Really? Why? It's like Dawson's creaky, weird. Like I don't like. <laughs> what do it. you guys say? Kurt. <laughs> Kurt. <laughs> Kurt, we Kurt, <laughs> we Kurt it, or uh, went with I went war. Now I can't understand a word you're fucking <laughs> saying. We Kurt, we went war, <laughs> went with her. You go out went war. Oh, last you went night. with her. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Not like man. yeah, we made out. Oh, uh, do magical. your best American accent. I only say do... something like, "Do you want to go see the baseball game?" What do you want? Do you want bro or do you want Valley Girl? Because that's the only two I can do. I want bro. Or I want, yeah, do bro because every every, every foreigner does Valley Girl. <laughs> What's well, up, dude? You want to fucking see the game or something, man? That was like a retarded person. <gasps> Americans <laughs> are stupid. No, now, they do, are. Do your smart Japan person. <laughs> <laughs> do this oh this intelligent japanese person you think about all the time i just make an iphone yeah you go. oh really solve a, solve a rubik's cube oh 
I just do pay right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> you solve something. You, I, I do a math, a really impossible math equation on the board, and you go X. X equals pi. Oh, fuck. Um, um, yeah, I like made out. We, you know what we used to say is hook up. When I was in, in, in high school, it's vicious. but now it means fuck. It, it took a turn. Like there was, there was like a overlap at some point where people were like, yeah, we hooked up. And I was like, oh, you guys like made out? And they're like, no, we fucked. And I was like, oh, hook up in my language meant make out, but whatever. Do you know what's worse is the, the base thing? Yeah, that I sucks. Second, first base. Second. Where'd you, you get to? to? Second base and third base. Yeah. But you would never even say home run if you guys, if you had sex with the person. Yeah, but also it's like, hey, leave baseball out of it. Yeah, you don't, don't even like it. Don't bring precious baseball in it. We don't like it. You just don't like it. Americans don't I w- like baseball? I went to Fenway Park, right? Okay. Last week. Okay. And here's my notes. This some is, people, You are so full of shit. Some people, diehard fans, live, eat, breathe, sleep baseball, right? They should be able to go to every single game. Most of you's just spoofing. Just looking for a background noise to drink a pint. To. That's yeah. all you want. Yeah, but isn't that what we're doing every single day? This is just background noise to drink a pint. To. No, that's not true. People are listening to this while they're working. Some people are probably having sex with us right now. Really? Yes. Hell yeah. I've had people write to us before. We should lean in and be like, is that how you do it? (laughs) You're a freak. (laughs) Ew, put that away. You don't need that in bed. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't like any sports. Do you like any sports? I don't. See, I feel like non-sports guys can spot non-sports guys. It's hard. It's no, really I, hard. I, the first time I met you, I was like, he probably doesn't watch sports. Of course. I mean, I don't. I look, yeah. Unless the sport is like, how many t-shirts from Hot Topic could you grab in 20 <laughs> seconds? Then then that's the sports that I'm into. I would watch that. Yeah. Um, then we do have, we, Ameri- like, Americans had t- t- television shows where you'd, like, have a cart and you'd, like, go, then they'd be like, okay, you have two minutes, grab whatever you want, put it in the cart. And if you can grab every single thing that you want, in two minutes, you can keep it. And they're like, they run up and down the aisles and they're like putting everything in the cart and all that stuff. See, that's why you guys are number one. Yeah, exactly. Is grab brick and stuff. See, like I that. don't like the number one thing because I feel like, you know, I just feel like we're not, you know what I mean? And it's stunting our growth being like, yeah, we're the best. Yeah. Like you never get better by thinking you're the best. Unless you get better by being like, I have to stay the best. There you go. That's how you get better. There you go. I, you know what I don't like? I don't like the self-filling pro- prophecy that uh, New Yorkers have, where it's like, people are like, oh yeah, New Yorkers, you know, they don't give a fuck. And for oh. years, people have said that. Like, yeah. New Yorkers don't give a fuck. They're cold, you know? And people hear that over and over and over again. And then it makes people that actually live here go, oh, yeah, I don't give a fuck. I gotta be cold, yeah. And you're like, no, you have to give a fuck sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's why you're eating. Like, the first time I came here and I visited Joe's Pizza, right? And I was in line. Classic, okay. I was in line. It was my first time here. Uh I was in line. And the guy working behind the till, if I had to draw a New York man, having never visited previously, this Mm. is what it would look like. He had a sideways corduroy brown New York Yankees hat and he's just screaming at everybody. Who's next? Exactly the yeah. kind of vibe, right? Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. I get there, right? You know, country bumpkin raised yeah. right on yeah. manners, yeah. right? Yeah. And I get to him just try to spark up a conversation because <laughs> you, you like talking to people so much. Yeah, and he goes, uh, lovely day, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, he goes, it's like, where are you from? Mexico or something? <laughs> And he goes, uh, yeah, man, what do you want? And I was like, uh, hey, what, what toppings do you have? He goes, and, and he just you goes, need to go outside and Google. He goes, it's pizza, bro. I don't know what to tell you. And I was like, maybe start with the toppings, you oh, ignorant bastard. I can't stand. He, I mean, he does have a point in a way because what is he going to say? Like, oh, yeah, we have all of the normal toppings that you put on pizza. There was four pies out in the front display. Right. He could have took the time to bun like... He could have taken the time. Listen, one of them's already out of the park. One of them's a margarita. I know I, what that is. I can't stand that shit. There's a, there's a... I can't stand workers that are like... I just can't stand people that don't give a shit. It makes you want to go like, okay, I'll never come here again. Have you ever worked in service? 
Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have empathy for people and you have empathy for servers. Sometimes. Sometimes. Do you ever act up? You better not. I <laughs> better not. You better not act up. What, what are you going to do about it? I beat the fuck out of you. Oh. <laughs> I, act, I act up. I, I do had you to actually do you throw a Dave offense? I, I, I mean, I don't act but up I in don't. a way where I'm like, you can't be this is that. cold and blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. I don't really act up in restaurants and stuff. But okay. the reason I don't have a primary care physician is because I, I mean, I do now. But the, the reason it took me like two years to get one is because I was lazy. But I also, I told the last, like, I, I had a fucking mental breakdown in my last um, doctor's office, mm -hmm. which feels like I'm getting ready to tell you that story. But I'm not. No, no, I want to hear. Nah. You can't blue balls me with a mantle breakdown nah, story. Say. All right. So, what? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, I did. I had a, I did. I, I didn't tell this on the podcast, right? No, I, uh, I, um, I got there. I was going to my, my pr primary care physician, this guy. Should I not say his name? Because then the, he might get fucked. I do not like him, though, now. And uh, he was one of the, he was a nice guy. He was always telling me how much he wanted to try stand up and stuff. He was like, I did a class at Governor's. And uh, <laughs> I was like, cool, man. Cool, cool. And uh, he was my guy for years. And then, and then, so I call them because I've been living in, I was living here and I went, mm -hmm. I was going there and I took the, the uh, Long Island Railroad and I told him, I called them and I was like, hey, um, trains are fucked up. And not an excuse. The trains are fucked up is always an excuse. But this time it was an excuse. And I went, trains are a little fucked up. I might be a couple minutes late. Um, just letting you know. Just giving mm -hmm. you the heads up. Mm -hmm. And she goes, okay, well, uh, if you're 10 minutes or if you're 15 minutes past your, or no, 10 minutes. If you're 10 minutes past uh, your reservation, whatever, uh, we'll have to reschedule you. Cold. Cold. And I went, okay. And I was just praying. I'm like, well, I got to hope. I'm not going to argue on the phone yet. I'm like, <clears throat> I'm already like, but well, it's I'm like, this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going, that's mm -hmm. bullshit. Okay. Especially okay. for someone who I'm a loyal client. Mm. I've been going him for years. <laughs> what a flex. <laughs> a loyal client. You, there should be some respect with that. Yeah. And uh, so then I get there and I'm 12 minutes late. 12. So it's two minutes past the time that I'm supposed to, whatever. And she goes, yeah, you're going to need to reschedule. And I went, I just came all the way from Queens to be here. And she's like, sorry, that's just policy. And I go, I'm not doing that. Let me see him. I go, there's no one here. I go, there's nobody here. There's, why can't I see him? I go, there's no one in the waiting room. Like, and I go, I'll wait. And, she go, and she's like, sir, you have to. And I, it just built and built and built. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. and I'm staying cool because I know how to stay cool. Mm -hmm. But I'm, you know, I'm showing a little of. I'm I'm angry. You're letting the scars show a bit. I'm letting the scars show a little bit, but buddy, you don't even know how much I let it show. Cause I I'm staying cool. I'm staying cool. And then one of the receptionists, another re not the one I was talking to, said something because I was like, they were like, you'll you gotta come back. It's policy. And I'm like, I'm not coming back. I'm like, let me see, let me talk. Like I like all I wanted to do was check on my fucking eczema. All he has to do is look at my skin. I go, all I need, because I need him to tell the fucking dermatologist that I am good for the medicine, it, oh. which is insane to me as well. Oh, you're right back there. I can feel it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're back in the moment. <laughs> well, I, my eczema has been acting up lately. It's actually looking pretty good now. But somebody in the comments, because you know I check them, go, what the hell is wrong with his hands? <laughs> <laughs> and someone was like, I think it's a skin condition. Um, which it is. So? And you get it from fingering women a lot. Did you, you know that? Eczema? Yeah. You get it from uh, fingering. Yeah. I know a few fingers, apparently. <laughs> Crazy. Bring it back. It's like getting throat cancer from eating box. Who, who got that? Someone died of that. Sorry. Don't point your finger at me. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. So, so you're at the receptionist. I'm at the receptionist. Uh -huh. I'm having a little bit of a mental breakdown because my hands are so itchy. And uh, then another receptionist. <laughs> you said that like, a, like a troubled blues player. <laughs> God, my hands are so itchy. Hands are so itchy. <laughs> I have to let this. Bum, 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 bum. My hands are so itchy. 
I go. Um, so then another receptionist comes out of the freaking blue mm-hmm. and goes, sir, you're going to need to calm down. Mm-hmm. And then, so I'm here. I'm like, mm-hmm. as soon as she said that. Yeah. Yeah. Little, you know, and I go, you need to suck my cock. And I went, you need to suck my dick or something like that. You did not say that. Yeah, I did say that because, and Brandon. that's, and they go, Ooh, just because. I hate this world that we live in where everything's so like, oh, oh, like you didn't think I was going to say it. I love. No, I did not think you were going to say that. I love saying stuff that people don't expect to say. You know what I mean? Where like if you're driving on the road or something and they're and you're like, I'm going to fucking kill your mom. And they're like, oh, uh, uh, you know, because everybody's saying fuck you and fuck you and stuff. But like, but there's certain venues where you, you can't do that. And I feel like a doctor's office is maybe one of them. Yeah, well, you know, you live your life one way. I live my life the other way. Damn, you are an Eminem fan. <laughs> Twelve <laughs> minutes late, told us that dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To- I think I, I actually specialist. did think I put a line in that in one of my songs of like, did I? I there's a song I, I, where I I say something about like, uh, and I shot the lady at the f- the I shot the lady at the front for asking to reschedule, and that's about her. Damn, you called it. And I didn't sh- actually shoot her, but I was gonna. Yeah. Uh, Wait, no. so you say suck my dick? They ha- they go, oh, God, <laughs> because they're fucking old Long Island women yeah. that are like, Bleh! and there's nobody in there. So I go, I'll wait. And I sit and I go, I go, I'm waiting for him. And I sit in the waiting room right across from her desk. And I just joker stare at her like in Dark Knight. Where I'm like. You know, and I'm just staring at her and uh hour and a half later. Hour and a half later. By the way, nobody came into the office. So they didn't really have a, a lot of things going on. Mm-hmm. Um so hour and a half later, this new guy, it's not his dude. Like the guy I was seeing is like a guy who works at his office mm-hmm. because he wasn't there that day. This guy's kind of like, you know, he's just like so and I would be annoyed with anybody, but he's like so far right. You know what I mean? Anybody, if they're so far left, so far right, it's like, you're fucking annoying. Yeah. Don't add politics to this. Don't mm-hmm. be like, like he's the type of guy that'll be like uh, doing like tests on you and being like, see that shit with that uh, Kamala Harris? <laughs> <laughs> and you're just, you have to be like, yeah, crazy. But do you chameleon? Do you like agree with him? Or do you like I, stand your ground? Oh, buddy. I got that fork tongue and my eyelids blink like that. Yeah. I'm a chameleon all the way. Yeah. I'm a chameleon. He's like, how about Kamala Harris? I mean, I go, oh, you mean that bitch? Unless. <laughs> yeah, that's goes, a danger of talking yeah, to yeah, yeah. drivers. Sometimes I just go completely far right. I don't like talking to anybody. Yeah. yeah. Except for this. So then, okay. So then, so he brings me in and he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, what happened out there? And I go, I was, 12 minutes late 12 and i go i'm coming from queens i'm and i'm still like (laughs) but i'm like i'm coming from queens it takes me a while and i'm such a loyal client i've been with you guys for a year over a decade like you couldn't give me any leeway and he's like but why are you screaming at my my girls here and i'm like my girls (laughs) i'm like and i say to him i go so we're kind of going back and forth in a way where he's not understanding me Uh and i'm going dude i really respect that you as a boss are loyal to your workers. Like you're standing up for them right now. And I completely respect that. And I get it, but I did not come here today to get into a fight with those women. Yes. I didn't go, Oh, I'm going to fight somebody today. I'm not in a mood, but your policy sucks. And I, it, there should be some leeway. And he was like, all right, well, whatever. So then we check my hands. He does the whole thing. Da, 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 da. I get a letter in the mail that says I need to apologize or something like this can never happen again. And you need to apologize. So then I call up mommy and daddy and I go, mommy, mommy, daddy, I got a letter in the mail from the bad man. And uh, they go, let me see this shit. And they, and then they send him a letter back without even consulting me. They're like, I hope you don't mind, but we sent him this letter that says this, and it says it's from you. <laughs> and I was like, okay. But it was a really well-written thing that was like, this is unacceptable. I'm a loyal client, all that bullshit. So then. Loyal client, so funny. 
<laughs> so then, whatever. Story's going on too long, but uh, that that I, I I assume I'm never going back there, mm-hmm. right? Cut to a couple months later, I get a, uh, a something in the mail that says I need to, or like a phone text message or something that says uh, I need to make a uh, like a checkup appointment at this place. Be it. And I go, okay. And I go, I really do need to see a doctor. It's been a while. And uh, so I, I got to. I'm like, okay, let me go. Let me go. And I, I give them a call. So they're like, call us back to confirm your appointment. Mm-hmm. And I call them. Is this story boring? Okay. No, I'm so then I call fully them. engaged. I call them. Uh, you're engaged? Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Thank you, man. Hey, and that's what you tune in for those jokes and so then I, hands. <laughs> hands. um so then i call them i go because i call my mom first i go what is this and she's like i don't know she's like oh maybe whatever and so i go okay and i give him a call and i go hi i go hi i and i already know i'm like this is not gonna end well and they're like hi thank you for calling this office uh how can i help you and i go this is Brendan Sagalo. And it feels like, like, like storm clouds start happening. And I go, I just got a text message about confirming a reservation for an appointment. And so I just want to do that. Mm-hmm. And she goes, um, like all I hear is, um, uh, give us one second. And I go, and I'm in that room and I go, I know what this is. And then two minutes goes by. Um, Bum, 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 dun, 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 dun. Your call is important to us. Dun, dun, dun. They're talking vicious shit about you in the background. Dun, dun. Brendan? Yeah? We're actually not allowed to take your appointment. We were told we're not allowed to take your appointment. And I go, then why did I get that immediately back? My itchy hands! I immediately get back into that and I go, then why did I get an appointment confirmation? And she goes, well, we use a, a, an outside business offices that, that, that will send blah, 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 blah. And I, I just go, okay, well, thanks. And I hang up. Lad, that is absolutely mental. It's absolutely mental. It's mad. Yeah, that is mad. It's mad. It's when mental. I, it's, um, I don't know what I was expecting to hear from your mental breakdown story, but telling a receptionist at a hospital to suck your cock or dick, did you say? Because that is that is a difference, but I think I said dick. Dick is more cock friendly. Is, it's dick, still not great that you said cock it, is, but cock is just too vicious. Suck my prick. <laughs> That's what I should have said. Suck my prick. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Have you ever had a mental breakdown? I've never told anybody that works in any field to suck my cock during business hours. <laughs> oh, during business during hours. During business hours. But uh, no, I don't think, I don't really think so. I've definitely had times where like, say like a series of unfortunate events happens within the 124 Ooh, lemony window. Lemony snick it. And I go, I'm going to fucking go mental. But I just keep it in. You know what I mean? Oh, it's so bad I never you. unleash it. I actually nearly I'm did I'm constantly a- unleashing it. I, I, I have it. to reel it in. Maybe I should unleash it someday. Unleash it. Fit. Go crazy. I was about to because Air Shoot Lingus. Shoot up a school. Had to buy, is that what that is? Just people unleashing it? Yeah, dude. I, I, yeah. I so mean, if I, I were to, I don't really know the ins and outs of that culture. But if I were to guess, they're getting <laughs> something out. You know what I mean? I don't think anyone's like. Doing it to relax. Yeah. You should have told the receptionist to suck your dick. It would have been the <laughs> same thing. Well, you know, and at the end of the day, it is what it is. But I, and then my, me and my dad had dinner and he's always fucking, he's, he, he's, 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 he raised me horribly. <laughs> he's like, he's like, see, he's like, uh, you know, maybe you have some anger issues. And I go, no, I was sticking up for myself. Okay. Pop. <laughs> Partner. Turn into Tupac and juice. You know, you said I was crazy before and I was tripping, right? But I was thinking about it. Maybe I am crazy. Brandon, you were tripping in that scenario. <laughs> you were I love tripping. tripping falling now, over. Uh, now, what are, do you like tripping? What are, what's American slang that you're like, that's cool and I'm taking that? Uh, oh, great question. Tripping. Tripping's pretty Whack. fun. What, what was one? Whack. Whack. I never used that now. Uh, right. One I don't understand, but I actually kind of do like, is uh, when people say, "Oh, I low key like whatever." 
And I'm like, Gen Z shit. you don't though. That's not, that's the second thing that you told me. Yeah, you, that's so not it's okay. pretty high key. It's not exactly information that you're clo- holding close to your heart. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm no, a low stranger. low key and high key suck ass. I like, I like all that, uh, what's that, what's that Big L song? A neighborhood is a, huh, I mean, blah, blah, blah. I do do it in the bar. When I'm lifted, I'm high. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> Lad, you know, right? I don't know if you're the same, right? But not to sound like an insufferable hipster cunt, but I don't listen to much like Billboard Top 200 songs, right? But every so often, right, a song will come out and I'm like, I cannot get this out of my skull. Yeah. Right now, it's... Uh, Think you can stop what we do? I doubt that, it. That's an absolute tune. Uh, I bet. Such a good song. Yeah. I found my spark and I own it. You know those kids? N- not personally, no. <laughs> I made Katie so uncomfortable on her episode because I was like, all those kids are fucking. <laughs> I was like, they're on, they got a hit song out. They're on tour. They're all fucking each other. And she's like, no, they're so tiny. They're so small. Um, what was the fucking. Uh, uh, what song do you like? Chappelle Rowan. Good luck, babe. Chappelle Roan, yeah. Huh? Nobody understands me <laughs> like bisexual Gen Z. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, and we're gonna dive into that. But I need we we gotta stop at the Chappelle Roan for a second. It's Wait, Chapel. <laughs> Chapel. That's Roan. her name, Chapel Roan. <laughs> no way. Yes. Right. Well, thank God you're the fourth person I've said this to, so that's not enough people <laughs> for me to be embarrassed. But what, now it's on a podcast. I'll tell you. I'll tell you oh yeah, we're uh, we're gonna play that on loop. That's this is the clip. <laughs> Chappelle Rome. Uh, clip it, chat. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, yeah. Uh, but I thought that same th- thing too. I was like, oh, Chappelle Ronan or yeah. whatever. Can you do Dave Chappelle doing Good Luck, Bib? I don't know that song. Oh, it's such a chain, lad. We were saying because oh, this is a very Soder story heavy episode. Ooh, my daddy, <laughs> um, we were laughing. Me and Soder were laughing because uh, he does such a good uh, Chappelle impression. And we were talking about like the the thing to do if you want to like make a Chappelle like if you want to do a Chappelle impression, you just you tell a story very intensely about someone who is black who is really good at something and mm. never got appreciated for it. So you go like, uh, you know, like uh, who, who invented the peanut? What's that guy's name? Uh, oh, uh, 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 Carver. Uh, or give me a black person. George Washington Carver George Washington invented Carver. the peanut. Okay, so you go. What? You go, George Washington Carver invented the peanut, but he was never allowed in a grocery store. <laughs> you do that you like you like say why like you like you it's like a tragic story so it's yeah. like give me a black person uh juicy j juicy j was able to <laughs> i don't know i don't know <laughs> no, i can't do it i'm stumped the unstoppable <laughs> <can't> <laughs> um yeah i don't know i can't do it but you get it I get it. Yeah. Who wants to do bits on fucking podcast no, anyway? No, so Soder is the man. He did a he did one of my letters of All right, shut up about Soder. Jesus Christ. Hey, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> See? He 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 signed the letter that allowed you to come into America? One of them, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Pretty cool. Soder is is his own uh uh Ellis Island. You, he goes He's doing Randy Savage when you come in. He's like, oh, yeah, what's your name? <laughs> That's a good Savage. <laughs> well, you know, I try. Um, Wait, can so, we go back to something? Yes, Sorry. Please. When you were talking about way at the beginning about the tattoo place you worked at, you mm-hmm. said people would spill so much tea, like just open up because they were there for hours. Oh, man. Like, Do you remember like the craziest shit you heard someone talk about? Like we're talking people talking about having affairs. What? Like, really? Yeah, they open up. It's something to do with like the... It was this, like taxi cab confessions. This, it, it literally like taxi cab confessions. It's something to do with like the needle and like, you know, the vulnerability of it. They're getting their favorite thing put in their body. So they just start opening up. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, there'd be some... There was one time... Uh, there was a client in, and I would DJ as well. Yeah. And one day I kept playing, um, what do you call it? Is it third eye jumper or something? 
Just, I need third you. eye blind. Third eye blind. Third eye jumper. <laughs> third eye jumper. Jumper was under the name of the songs. Yeah. Yes, that's I wish you would step back from that. Yes. So I played that. Oh yeah. And I played it on loop. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. I'm packed and I'm holding and I'm smiling She living, she going, she leaves to me Says she leaves to me ovation And her motivation She goes down and she goes down for me And I make her smile like a drug for you Do ever what you want to do coming over you Keep on smiling what we go through Won't stop to the rhythm that divides you And I speak to you like a code to the curse Drop another line with a code with a curse Do it like a freak show, taste the stage Given the game she plays, she said I want something else that was beautiful. That's why podcasting was invented as a format <laughs> for things like that. Yeah, fucking Stern can never do that. No, never, not in a million years. Take out hired. You okay, fucking... so you were playing Third Eye Blind Jesus. Yeah, and I was singing. Oh. I was singing along to the song, and the clients, uh, like friend, had literally committed suicide the week before. Oh Jesus! Fucking and he told Christ. me after the fact, and I was like, "Well, he wouldn't have known that I knew that." Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and also there's not for nothing, but me personally would would have loved that. I would have been like, you know, because you gotta get it out. You gotta you be do. like if, if one of your friends kills themselves and then you go like you go like it's kind of nice to be thinking about it. Yeah. To be like because you're not gonna be thinking about it forever. I yeah. mean you might, but you're not gonna like, you know, I, I would enjoy that. Yeah. Personally. That's just me personally. It it is funny. And it is funny. You're going, yeah, you go, oh, this song rule one more time. <laughs> <laughs> song's so nice, you gotta play it twice. Am I right? Why are you crying? It I was wish more you. Like seven times. <laughs> yeah, it was oh, really? I was really feeling that song. Right now, it would be Chappelle Roan. I'm never calling it Chapel. Yeah. I'm sticking to Chappelle Roan. Now, do you know you two? Like personally? Yeah. No. Never had an interaction with Really? Never once. <laughs> never. I have a couple of friends. What about the Beatles? The Beatles never. Uh, or, me and McCartney have never <laughs> been in the same venue. Together. I always thought it was really funny that the Beatles have a song for um, when it's your birthday. You know that song? Which one's that? It goes, um, do you know that song, Nicole? Look up the Beatles uh, happy birthday song because it's like, it's your birthday and happy birthday. It's like something That's like that. That's so funny. And it just makes me laugh because those guys were just printing money and they're like making songs about it. They have a Christmas song and I'm just, I just always laugh. I was walking around my apartment just doing this and laughing to myself, like picturing Paul McCartney bringing that idea to the Beatles and being, and being like, so I was thinking, um, why don't we make a song, like a birthday song, you know? And they're like, there was already a birthday song. <laughs> no, but there's it's, not a Beatles birthday it's song. Already, is there? It, there's already a birthday song, Paul. Happy birthday to you. No, no, I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, but we've got to reinvent the Wheel Boys, you know. We've got, to, we've got to take happy birthday and give it new meaning. <laughs> really extend it out. I know. mean, how, how long could. I'm just down to do some drugs. <laughs> I've done a lot of acid, and it's got me thinking that happy birthday is too for me and mad. We need to there's, change it up. There's already a birthday song, Paul. There should be every <laughs> artist going should have a happy birthday song. Yeah. So that every time it's your birthday, you get to play your artist's happy birthday song. Yeah, I think it's fucking corny as hell, though, to like write a birthday song. No, but if it was done right, Little John and the Side Boys would make a great happy birthday song. Yes, I. Do you know what I mean? I completely agree. Three Sex Mafia, they would make a good happy Juicy birthday J. song. Juicy J singing your happy birthday would be absolutely a match. Juicy J wrote the best <laughs> happy birthday song in the world, but he never had a birthday. <laughs> he never got to celebrate his birthday. It's like something like that. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, no, that's good. I have COVID, so you might be attracting it. Do you actually? No, come on. I have COVID, so you might be attracting it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, run that one back one time. <laughs> no, uh, but it's going around, so 
I heard, I've heard of that. Yeah, I've heard of people getting it again. Every time I see a mask now, we were talking about this. We were doing a gig and there was a couple of people in the crowd with masks. And I was like, it's, it's like when you see a goth. You're yeah. like, you're still in that? Yeah, you're still still doing that, huh? Move on. Are you telling me one of you motherfuckers is a vampire kid? <laughs> Did you used to be a vampire uh, kid? No. I was like I was like a Dickies like Blink-182 kid. Okay. I would wear really high tube socks and okay. Dickies and like shirts and like spiky hair. And then I found hip hop and <laughs> I would wear do rags and stuff and no, you didn't. No, you didn't. You were wearing do rags. Yeah, Brandon, come on, now, mate. What? What color was the do rag? Any color. I once had a camo one. I had. That's how my mom. Uh, my mom really wanted to understand it, so she like. And I gotta give her props. She would go like head first into it, where um, she would buy me do rags, and she would. She went, at one point, she wrote like a history rap. So she was like, this will help you with uh, your homework and stuff. And she's like, and I wish I had that rap. She's like, Thomas Jefferson, ha na ha na ha, you know? And then she's like, and these motherfuckers coming at the dun 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 <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and English, English motherfuckers trying to spill the tea. Ho, 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 ho. That's, that's my great. that's my mom. Ho, 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 ho. And um, <laughs> that's a great mother. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. Muller. Mother, that's a great mother. Oh, mother! No, no, no! You find saying that's a, that's a really good mother. I you've thought got that was there. slang. I, I thought you were spelling an M U L L E R. No, I was saying. No, that's... but she was nice. But then eventually, she had her her own little breakdown, and she yelled at me once and um, stole the reception. She sucker clip. No, but I. So I. We were all sitting at the dinner table once, and we never did that. We never ate as a family together, and this might have been the last time. Me neither. And um, we're all sitting at the table. My dad is saying, thank your mother for this dry, dry steak. And um, did he say it like that? No, he was like, thank, was thank your mother for the food. And it was like, we'd have to eat a steak like that. We'd have to be like. Because <laughs> I was going to say, that about so your mother, dry. Brian. So dry. My mom would cook steak in a microwave. It was awful. And. Um, and then, so I had a, my girlfriend at the time, because I'm the fucking man, I had a girlfriend in 10th grade. What is this? Uh, she wrote on my hand. Okay. Which is what I was saying. She wrote something like, I fucked Jesus. And my mom was big into religion at that point. And she was like, what does that say? <gasps> you fucked Jesus? And then she smacked me across the face. Never did that before. Smacked me across the face. First time. And this was big. I think I had just seen Eight Mile, so you bought um, a Raptor. <laughs> so I, yeah, I was like, "All right, I'll see you at the fucking shelter." The steak is dry. You made me cry. <laughs> it's your hands. <laughs> it's my hands. <laughs> dry hands. MC Dry Hands. The birth of Etchy Hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. I go. You made it in the microwave, and now I'm working like a slave every day. For MC Dry Hands. Dry Hands. So and, she smashed um, you. <laughs> she, she smashed me. Yeah. yeah, I smashed my mom. And um, Poster pre stick. This is important. Poster pre what? Stick. Steak? In the middle of the, the dinner. Okay. So then she, so steaks are out. We're all eating. How'd your day go? How'd your day go? And I must have went like this. She saw it. She flipped out. Boom. Smacked me. And I go, I, and I don't know if you've seen Eight Mile. I have seen it, but uh, you know when he's like, anytime he's mad, he's like, you know what is that? Where he's like, I'm a grown man, like that, like that, exactly like that. Uh, you sign me up to battle. I'm a grown man. <laughs> you ain't the future of shit. And so I flip out on my mom in the same cadence, and I'm like, you fucking bitch, what the fuck, like that. Yeah. Real, real. Uh, Real like that. And then she, she's like, God, it's your room. And I go up to my room. And at the time, I had a desktop with a picture of Tupac and Biggie on it. And she came in and she was like, if you weren't listening to these fucking. <laughs> and then she just threw a hard R at me. Literally, me and my dad are sitting on the, on the bed. And he's like, he's like, so. Uh, and my dad's a fucking pussy, too. So he's going like, so why'd you write that on your hand, man? Like blaming me. 
And I was like, I didn't, it was just have fun, you know? And then she comes in, if you weren't listening, he's fucking, and, uh, and then slams the door. And me and my dad are like, oh, brother, a <laughs> doll. And, uh, you know, that's the end of that story. But, dude, your dad doing the, your dad like summering everything down and being like, why did you write that in your hand? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That reminds me of uh, trying, to, trying to be like, hey, kiddo. It, which it's is all like, gonna be okay, and then my mom comes in and says the N word. <laughs> the, <most, laughs> the most famous advert of all time in uh, Northern Ireland is it's an advert for butter. And as you're describing that story, you know there's a couple of details that maybe didn't make it to the advert. You know, no hard <laughs> butter. Ours. And uh, the advert right is there's a kid come home comes home from school right, and he's living with his granddad and his mother right. And it's like very Belfast. So like she comes in and she's like, he's been fighting down at that school again there. Right? <laughs> and, then, uh, <laughs> and then the granddad, yeah. the, gra- the kid like comes in, throws the rucksack off, storms into the room, shuts the door. And then the granddad turns around and he's like something to the fucking goodwill hunt. And he's just sitting there slouched and he's like, not to worry. And then he gets up <laughs> and the kid's like looking at fish like this here. And he's just like huffing. And the granddad comes over and he goes, <clears throat> is that a saying he's fighting fish there and the kid's like yeah granddad and then he goes they fight with all the other fish don't they and he goes and then the granddad leans in and goes is that why he's all alone <laughs> <laughs> then it cuts to Tremona Butter <laughs> Jesus Christ it's so good lad I'll oh show it to you after that's a idiom I'm big on idioms I'm always I'm always throwing them out at the perfect time that's what everybody always says Saglo's good I've always idiom. said that I say, say what you want about Saglo man loves an idiom say what you want though I don't like but um <laughs> I, I'm really good at idioms like I, I did one yesterday I forgot what it was but that one's gonna stay I go uh, I go you know why Siamese fighting fish are all alone because they're always fighting yeah butter yeah and then i'll say butter and i'll go butter them fish tell receptionists to suck their dick don't they <laughs> you know what i wish i saw that before <laughs> that because that really would have helped me but all we have in adverts right i don't know how well versed you are with northern ireland adverts and commercials i don't know anything we i mean that. i went there i told you and then all we have besides that is do you have so we have the doe and like it's about road safety and all that there. But every single advert, this went on for about a decade. Every single advert by the DOE was just small child, drink driver, drink driver, mows down small child. Oh my God. And we they play like too. sweet child of mine over the top of it, but like oh. acoustic version. Oh. Like a Bushwick coffee shop version of sweet child of mine. <laughs> just while a child's getting mowed down. <laughs> That's awful. We had, we had one like that too. It was for weed. And uh, the the commercial for it, it would uh, they were going through a a White Castle drive through I think it's White Castle it looks White Castle mm-hmm. and they just keep showing them going through and they're like they keep going like they're like I'll take two burgers and they all laugh and stuff and then it, it cuts to the next day and they're like oh do you have a milkshake with the and it's just it's like funny and then there's one um, and then one of the days a little girl is riding a tricycle and they just fucking plow right into her and uh, and they're like smoking is not good <laughs> it is a funny scenario to have a car full of stoners at white castle mowed down a little girl on her bike yeah you know just to see the reaction of i all. always said and i tried to do a bit about it but it turns out i was stealing but i think the part of it where that wasn't stealing still has some chunk of bit in it where i would go you know the those commercials those weed commercials were so off because they were always uh, they were always judging you for smoking mm-hmm. and not asking why you're smoking weed in the first place. Mm-hmm. Damn. So we'll leave on that, I guess. That was very Bell Hex of you. Yeah, and I want to do this new thing with all my guests where I take uh, uh, this facial spray that I like a lot, and I'll spray myself so you know it's not crazy. Yeah, it's good. And I want to spray my guest. Would you take a spray? I'll take a spray. All right, right. <laughs> scary <laughs> how'd that feel uh, refreshing yeah i actually do feel quite refreshed yeah thank you for being my guest today thank you for having me today bran in your house yeah in my house <laughs> i'm gonna have to have fucking subtitles for this guy he's like it's like it's like podcasting with don Vito. <laughs> didn't he get caught with child porn he sure did yeah that's it that's he's terrible. a dead guy though now 
He is dead. He's a dead guy. Yeah. He's a dead nonce. Uh huh. Nonce is pedophile. Nonce. 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 Yeah, we say nonce. Why? Sick of it's like a fun word. Pedophile is very clinical. Nonce sort of reduces them down to. But like, what does it come from? I actually don't know. Nonce. Nonce. I like that. I might say that. You dirty ass nonce. I'll go. I'm a nonce. Sorry, everybody. All right. Later. The Rap Jack Black and Zag Daddy, I'm back at it with a fantastic podcast for your asses. Yapping in a trap like a rescue cat, and the rescued up like they're waiting on the Batman. You tuned into the dude who threw booze back, blacked out, woke up drunk, covered in bruises. It's Zag Daddy the Pod, an odd fellow, the great white chubby, I'm becoming a marshmallow. It's Zag Daddy the Pod, so sit back and relax, cause like a broken arm, I got a cast now. It's Zag Daddy the Pod, you made a good choice, so enjoy, don't be annoyed, now here's my dumb voice. So recognizable, scheme as a Unreliable diary of a guy who's higher than a freaking diving board I'm tired, call me Biden, you his line cause you were lying with your wardrobe Give that back, you ain't that guy bro Kaleidoscope stripping, goddamn I'm tripping Sipping shroom tea, looking at a blank television Got a girl here gripping, thinking we'll do some business But that's the last thing that I want Seriously Big dog, I'm on shirts now Still scared that my house is gonna burn down I'm a rare card, an old Charizard Getting BJ's on a bench of a promenade Don't know what to do, I got a lot of problems Lot of emotional truths I have some nausea, I'm getting robbed Every time I get a coffee Cause six bucks, it's just too much uh. Team, me and Galeen and the four Beatles Kidnapping whores illegally, pumping them full of needles Eating Chinese till Steven asks us to order a pizza Want to run to get it, I can't do either It's Zag Daddy the Pod, don't think twice Just bob your head, dealing your chicken with no rice It's Zag Daddy the Pod, and on God I won't stop Unless I wanna, that's kinda the deal, huh? It's Zag Daddy the Pod, no need to deviate Your ears are not the only holes that I'm about to penetrate It's Zag Daddy the Pod, so thanks for tuning in Truman Show Flow, if I don't see you, you can suck my dick